In this lecture, we'll talk about the accessory structures of the skin, hair, nails, and glands. We'll describe the structure and function of hair and hair follicles, compare the two major types of glands, sweat glands and sebaceous glands within the skin, and describe the structure and function of the nails. Overall, the integumentary system is made up of the skin, which is the cutaneous membrane, made up of the epidermis, and the dermis, and its accessory structures, the hair, glands, and nails. Accessory structures of the skin are hair follicles and hair, sebaceous glands, which are oil glands, pseudoriferous glands, which are sweat glands, and the nails. Most of these structures are derived from embryonic tissue, which also gave rise to the epidermis during development. Let's start with hair follicles and hair. Hair follicles are tiny microscopic hair producing organs that extend deep into the dermis and often the subcutaneous layers. If we look at this diagram here, you can see the base of the epidermis and then the hair follicles stretching all the way down into the dermis with a sebaceous gland nearby. Attached to that hair follicle is the hair, which is stretching out to the surface of the dermis. Hair itself is a non-living keratinized structure. It insulates the skull, keeps out foreign particles, and at the very base of hair has sensory receptors such that when hair is moved, it triggers sensation within the skin. There's a tiny little muscle pictured here, which is a smooth muscle attached to the hair follicle. This muscle is called the erector pili. Erector for straightening and pili for hair. It makes our hair stand up. The erector pili muscle is a smooth muscle that contracts with heightened emotion, cold temperature, and it pulls on the follicle and raises the hair up. This is the tiny little smooth muscle that's responsible for goosebumps when we get cold or when we get excited. The two glands found within the skin are sebaceous and sudoriferous glands. Let's start with sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands secrete sebum. Sebum is an oily secretion that is secreted onto the hair follicle to keep the hair moist. And that oil also ends up on the skin surface to help to lubricate the surface of the skin. Oil secretion or sebum secretion is stimulated by androgens. Remember this later when we talk about particular conditions that, that affect the sebaceous glands. For example, acne. Sebum, or this oil, helps to keep the hair and skin supple. It also has a role in protection against bacteria. Although, as we know, infection of the sebaceous glands can cause conditions like acne, and in that case, will need to be treated by some kind of antibiotic or probiotic that helps to keep the bacteria in check. These sebaceous glands are located primarily on the face, chest, and back. So when you're learning about conditions which affect the sebaceous glands, look for distribution of those lesions on the face, chest, and the back. Pseudoriferous glands are the other main type of gland found within the skin. There are two types of pseudoriferous glands. Ecrine or merocrine glands are the glands which we would normally talk about as sweat glands. They have a coiled duct, duct which opens to the skin surface. That's different than the other glands, which generally are going to attach to hair follicles. So for eucrine and merocrine glands, look for a separate duct away from the hair follicle. They have a watery secretion, which is cooling to the body. They're widely distributed, abundant on the hands, the feet, and the face. Apocrine glands are also pseudoriferous glands. They also have ducts, but rather than emptying onto the skin surface, their ducts empty 
onto hair follicles. So how can you tell the difference between apocrine glands and sebaceous glands? The difference is in their location. Apocrine glands are confined to axillary armpit and genital regions. They produce a milky sweat, which is composed mainly of water with lipids and proteins. Nails. Nails are scale-like modifications of the epidermis. They have a keratinized plate, that's that tough plate that you can feel, or the plate that we paint with nail polish, and they protect the ends of the fingers and toes. The main structures of the nail are pictured here in this diagram. Let's take a look. The nail plate is the majority of the nail structure. It's produced by the matrix of the nail, found more proximally. Just above the nail plate will be a layer of skin, which is the posterior nail fold. There are other layers of skin nearby. These are important because you can have infection of regions of the nail that can affect these areas. And you're gonna to wanna to be able to use this terminology to describe where these infections are located. In these terms, I want you to notice the root word onyx, or O-N-Y-C-H. Onyx refers to nail, where hypo, epo, and pero refer to the location in relation to the nail. So the hyponychium is the skin layer below the free edge of the nail. The peronychium is the skin layer to the side of the nail plate. And the epomychium is just above the nail fold. Here's a review of those structures of the nail. Take a minute to see if you can find all of these structures and review the anatomy of the nail and the skin nearby. All right, that's it for the hair glands and nails. Let me know if you have any questions.